Michael. So this is a. All right. So today is uh, January tenth, two thousand twenty-one, and uh, we're going to continue our discussion on the Desiderata extinction nadi in light of this week's events in the United States. Um, we're going to go start off, or we're going to have a full discussion on what happened in the United States um, with the people, the Trump supporters breaching the Capitol. Um, I'm sure you guys know what happened, but it was, uh, uh, it shocked everyone, especially in America, we, we didn't expect it. Um, I, I would say that the left didn't expect that to happen. I mean, didn't see it coming. Um, but uh, I'd like to know your perspectives because um, it it really was a shock for some people, maybe not for some. Um, yeah, it's a surprise here in Europe. People are just well. In Fr I was in France a few days ago, and uh, you know how they like to storm things and. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> they were like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize, you know, uh, the French people I was talking with were talking about the beginning of a civil war, and some other people were talking about, uh, about it was manipulated. Some other people were talking about nuclear war. I mean, that's what I was hearing in Europe. But you know we, we're so far away from that sort of regime that, and here in Ireland, all they talk about is COVID. So, I don't know. <laughs> um, and Irish people worried about their families out there. You know, that's that's all I can say because I'm just watching. I, I I'm kind just, of feel it's sorry. it's been uh, it's been quiet today. Has anybody seen any recent news like in the past? You know, eight hours. No. Mm. No. Hey, did, did everybody see Michael Moore's? Did Did everybody see Michael Moore's video? Yeah, I mean, this Michael Moore seems to be operating at a rather superficial level in his commentary. There, I, I was sort of surprised. Mm. It, it was sort of talking as though he takes the system seriously you know, that he believes that it really was a democracy in the first place anyway, and that the, the you know, all all of the, the, the deceivers seem to me to be taking the conventional line on American society and going, oh, you know, it, it, it's it's been damaged. Um, I, I've, I would have thought he'd managed something a little bit better than that. Um, it was disappointing, really. I, I think he's got to be careful. I think... Everybody has to be careful now. So, guys, I'm going to have to go out on a limb and just um, <laughs> put my credibility on the line here. But I'm I'm really reading this very badly, very very badly, and I don't think the rest of the world is getting it. So, you you get to see my predictive abilities because I think this will rile up. You know, this will this will um, basically unravel really quickly over the next week. So I'll give you my interpretation and mm -hmm. you'll rapidly see whether I'm full of shit or not because this this is where the rubber meets the road. And if it's <laughs> if it doesn't then then you can say, Hugh, you're full of shit. And we're not listening to your predictions anymore. <laughs> but um, I believe that the 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 mainstream media and particularly the left has fallen for its own, own bullshit. And I think we in a very, very bad place. This is my read from South Africa. So just to tell you where I'm at, um, I was in Rome. Uh, so uh, yeah, can everybody mute, mute please? Um, so I was in, I was in Rome um, uh, in 2017 after Trump was elected. And there were all these these guys in a boat, they were all kind of Brahmins from, you know, Yale. They were all old guys, but, you know, real establishment types. And we had a chat about Trump, and um, they were worried, seriously worried. Um, so when they left, 
they um shit i've got to hold this together um <clears throat> When they left uh, for America, they sailed for America, they gave me this book and I said, I must read it. It's called On Tyranny. Uh, it's this guy called Timothy Snyder <clears throat> and it says 20 lessons for the 20th century. So what this book was written for, it was written immediately, it, Im immediately, I think, before, Trump took office, but they knew he was going to take office and it was written about Trump and saying clearly that we would come to this day. Um, I, I had my doubts about it, but um, I don't anymore. Um, so the thing I must read to you most is is basically he they put out basically let me tell you who this, this guy is. So uh, Timothy Snyder is Levine Professor of History at Yale University, and he's the author of quite a few of these books, um, <clears throat> but a Jewish guy. And you can see where he's coming from because um, <clears throat> uh, basically he's a member of the Committee of Conscience from the United States Holocaust Memorial. So um, <clears throat> I think the big thing that happened on Wednesday, um, it's... I, I'm, here is where I start my interpretations. I don't interpret it as a, a riot or anything like the mainstream media is interpreting it. I think it was quite well orchestrated. Uh, in fact, very well orchestrated. It was actually quite a bit of theater. And the way I read it is it's a shot across the bows for Republicans. Basically, what Trump is doing is he's telling Republicans to fall in line. Okay, now, um, the chapter in this book says basically, um, number six says, like, be wary of paramilitaries. And it says basically, uh, it says, uh, when men with guns have always claimed to be against uh, the system, uh, start wearing uniforms and marching with uh, torches and uh, pictures of a leader, the end is nigh. And then the guy who gave me this book underlined this and said, <clears throat> um, <laughs> when the pro leader, they call him the pro leader, they don't name him. Uh, when the pro leader, <clears throat> paramilitary, and the official police and military intermingle, the end has come. And he underlined that. So why I'm so emotional is because that's what happened on Wednesday. And I think people have missed it. See, the script is, is all wrong. I, I'm sorry, I'm doing a kind of Greta here, but what's supposed to happen after Wednesday is all the chiefs of police and the military are supposed to take the podium, calm the country down. There's, there's supposed to be a massive soothing. It hasn't happened. All the indications as I see them is that the police and the military are in inside. It's an inside job. It was done by Trump and Trump has control of them. They basically, it is a military coup and I didn't believe it until Wednesday, but Trump is actually backed by the military. So the QAnon stuff, all the conspiracy um, stuff has gone, um, it's gone too far and the, the left has not taken it seriously enough. Uh, what the, it's exactly as Michael Moore sa says it. It's basically you, the Capitol building is just bristling with crowd control things and the military Basically, they have all like, I've seen fucking microwave heat weapons and shit like that, right? Uh, there's no way a crowd can storm uh, the Capitol. The fact that it happened means that it was inside job. And, and this, it means that the security staff in the Capitol were in on it. So it is exactly as you say, basically, the end is count. So my interpretation now 
is that the <coughs> Congress has only one thing. Well, the easiest thing for them to do and the most immediate thing for them to do is to uh, ask Pence to invoke Article 25. Uh, he would just basically, it's very quick and easy, basically he could do it with the vote from the cabinet and he would supersede him. The fact that that hasn't happened is very alarming. It means probably that it is not going to happen. It means that, that Pence wouldn't do it. So Pence is, seems to be taking a middle line. He, he wouldn't go with Trump and actually, um, you know, go against the, uh, the count. So he, he, he punted that. But he must have also punted Pelosi asking him to uh, basically invoke Article 25. Or, uh, so what that means is Congress has to go to impeachment. It looks like that's the route they're taking. That's the only legal avenue they have. It means they'll quickly have to have a vote in Congress uh, to impeach. <clears throat> if uh, they, they, they only need a majority vote to get that. Um, so that, that's doable quickly. What happens next is, is not quick. And then it, it's, the impeachment would go to the Senate and they'd have a trial. The tri to actually impeach Trump, you would have to get two thirds of the Senate. So you'd have to have a trial and get two thirds. I really don't see this happening quickly, and I really don't see it happening before the 20th. So I think what's happening is the left and the mainstream media are getting into this. Um, they're falling for their own, own bullshit because they're thinking we just have to get to the 20th and we'll be fine. And that's not my read at all. What I see is that the more they're going after Trump, the more they're pushing him out on the ledge. So the more he gets cornered, the more dangerous he is. Now, Wednesday was a clear breach because that's clearly treason. So you have a sitting president committing treason. So that's a kind of a Rubicon that Trump can't come back from. There really is nowhere else for him to go but forward. He's exactly in the position of Macbeth. It's basically, you know, the quote in Macbeth where I'm so steeped in blood that as to return would be as tedious to go o'er. Uh which means it, it means going back now would have as worse consequences than going forward. And that's where Trump is now. He, he can't come back after this. He's, he has knowingly put himself in this position. Basically, he's put himself, he's burnt his bridges, and he's put himself and everyone with him on dead ground. It's, it's a strategy from uh, Lao Tzu and the art of war. It's basically, if you put your people on dead ground, they will make a, a fantastic stand. And that's what he's done. He's done that to himself. And what I can see from, from the, the things that I've seen uh, uh, that have been televised of him, he's actually enjoying himself now. So he's getting to a place where uh, he's really in a very, very bad place for a psychopath to be. He's, he's, he's getting a high and feeling more alive and more confident, the more extreme the situation gets. Now, I get the impression that it's the complete opposite with Pelosi and, you know, basically the politicians, they're running around like headless chickens and they are shit scared. So they're getting into a weaker and weaker position. I cannot see a scenario where uh, Biden gets to the White House on the 20th. What, what so the military. So he has the military and the police. You think he's got them uh, in his pocket? Like that? Well, that they're not uh, siding with Pence and. Uh, but Pence, and Pence is sitting on the fence. Pence is trying to. I, my interpretation is Pence is sitting on the fence. So basically, what it, it there must be um, there must be turmoil all over the Capitol and the Pentagon. There must be a divide, uh, but. What's stunning about, um, about Wednesday is that they had all the advanced knowledge. It means that, okay, yeah. now th th there is a deep state. Okay, so f first of all, all you fucking leftist little shithead cunts that wouldn't even believe in conspiracy theory, there's a fucking conspiracy theory, and there's a fucking deep mm -hmm. state. It's the right wing, you fucking idiots. They're, so that's mm -hmm. that. let's call them the deep state. The deep state is not left-wing, liberal, blah, 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 deep state, not that one. 
There is a deep state. It's the QAnon guys. It's all these guys that have been doing all of this shit for a long time. So let's just call it the fucking deep state because the deep state is about to take power. The right wing deep state exists. They fucking, I just, I, every time I heard fucking liberals talk about conspiracy theory, I want to fucking bash their heads in because mm. it, it's, it's always been a fucking conspiracy theory, you numbskull, dipshit, you know, complacent idiots. Mm. This, this the deep state is, is basically moving now. I didn't realize they were that strong. I, yeah. I, I talk to liberal guys. I have inside or any contact I have of information and stuff are, are liberal guys. Yeah, I have to, I have to agree here because the United I think what's going on is the military industrial complex is doing in the United States what it's done in other countries for hundreds of years now. Yeah. It's overthrowing the democracy and installing a fascist dictatorship. Yeah. Yeah, you see, you see this is what what's happened is that the uh, the soldiers have come home. So America has been doing these kind of operations all over the world. And what the reason why you don't do them is because eventually they do it to you. All those guys are well practiced at this game. You see that, you know, the, the guy with the horns and all of that, it's show business. They put that shit on. It's planned long in advance and it's orchestrated to a level you wouldn't fucking believe. But this has always been done to foreign countries. Now, what happens if you do it once too many times in foreign countries, the guys get good at it. At some stage, they're going to do it on the home territory. And that's what's happening before our eyes. So I didn't realize that I thought that basically there was an even split and, you know, the good guys in the Pentagon and stuff have, uh, you know, have things under control and, and stuff. But... You see, what has clearly happened is the FBI stood down. There have been something like 80 arrests. It's 80 arrests is, is a token arrest. It's basically, it's so half-hearted that it essentially means that it, it's, it's simply sending a signal to other paramilitaries that you can take to the streets with immunity. But the, the, the lack of response to Wednesday is a clear signal saying, come down to Washington, basically, the, uh, it's exactly as Moore says. So basically on the 17th, 17th guys, 17th of fucking January, as anybody fucking listen to the, this thing, 17th of fucking January, they are beginning an armed march on the Capitol. Okay. This is your last fucking chance. What's likely to happen in my view is that the the house has to start a legal process that legal process moves slowly the paramilitaries and the deep state can move faster so they they will outpace them what they liable to do is to cause unrest <clears throat> the unrest gives and i know all the script from south africa this is a very old script it's not even from south africa this is script is as old as tyrants basically that insurrection, this is out of Hitler's playbook. This is what Hitler did after the Reichstag fire. They cause mayhem this week that allows Trump to declare martial law. After martial law, that's it. That's game over for, for basically, I know, all, I know liberals around here that are saying like, can't wait until the 20th because then this will all be over and Trump will be frog marched out of the White House. I'm saying, Trump does not look to me like he's going to be out of the White House. I would think it's far more likely that Biden gets arrested. If, if you gave me odds of, you know, come the 21st, is it Trump arrested or Biden? I'd say, fuck, it's Biden. And the, the left is not getting it. Basically, the, the liberals are so comfortable and have their heads stuck so far up their ass that they're not seeing that basically... It's Biden that's going to get arrested. See, what happens after Trump declares martial law is he has to have a crackdown. There has to be a light of, night of the long night. And everybody that's on that list will have to basically go to bed tonight and think, where are you on Trump's list? But obviously, the number one is like Hillary and Biden and all these guys, right? Biden's cabinet, all these guys he's put together, they're basically the top of Trump's hit list. He has to go and round them up. 
after you declare martial law, basically, you he has two two arrows in his quiver. COVID, he can declare lockdown. So he would declare lockdown, and basically he's in legally fantastic territory. We we we're, this is a trifecta of of basically defeat, because he can safely call a lockdown for health reasons, declare martial law because of insurrection and uh, basically riots on the street, and then he can start arresting people and no one can do anything about it. There'll be mayhem, basically, but it'll be too late. By the time, you know, NFAC and BLM and anarchists and Antifa get on the streets, it's too late. Basically, these, these you see, get this. I've been telling everybody for fucking years, about, I'm trying to warn about this day, because you had a window where you could do all sorts of shit, but nobody did it because they were too fucking comfortable. Nobody heard, nobody listened to it. So when Trump declares martial law, all there's going to be blood on the streets. I'll tell you why. Because they th they're not up to where we're at. The left thinks it's going to be Black Lives Matter and it's going to be, we're going to take to the, the streets and protest. Not after martial law, you're not. After martial law, they're looking for excuse to do Tiananmen Square. They're looking for blood. You think all these guys will go out, Michael Moore will go out and he'll say, oh, you know, but you must be peaceful and wear a mask and stuff. And basically they don't realize they're walking into the machine guns. Once you've declared martial law, you have to have blood. Because otherwise, what happens next? Otherwise, basically, if you're emboldened, the, more and more people will come out into the streets. They're doing the exact thing now that the, the Democrats are, are fucking up. You see, because nobody's done anything about, effectively anything about Wednesday, it's a clear signal to every fucking paramilitary right-wing fuckhead in the country is you're safe to come out on the streets. That's why they did it. It's a test run for the real thing. And all these liberals and the mainstream media, they think, oh, it's a riot on the hill. It's not. It's a test run for the main fucking event, you stupid fuckheads. And because basically the FBI, all these guys, they haven't prosecuted anybody. 80 guys and stuff is a token thing. It's a, it's a signal, a loud signal saying, come on out, dudes. It's safe. Bring your weapons. And now, so imagine then now they all come out, right? The next thing that happens is it's no longer Occupy Wall Street and everybody sings Kumbaya and stuff because they have to make sure that the left, anarchists and, and us, don't think it's safe to be out on the streets. They have to mow people down to get them back indoors. So they will, right? They, there's going to be blood. It has to be blood. The story always unfolds the same way because they have to get everybody scared and indoors. So, so you've, what I'm saying is the left and all of us have lost the, the window is closed on us to do all those nice, peaceful things. And we fucked it up trying to be fucking nice and peaceful and nonviolent. That we're going to get our comeuppance now. Because now the, we didn't do enough in the, in the window when we were privileged. So now, you know, this rhetoric that the left is saying is, is they're completely misunderstanding the situation. They're saying, that, again, they're saying in terms of, you know, basically race and things like that. They're saying, well, this is, shows white privilege because if you were black, you couldn't do that and basically march up the stairs of the Capitol. You fuckheads, you're not getting it. It's not because they're white. It's because they, the fucking military is compromised. It's because the security at the Capitol is compromised. It's not because of the color of your skin. Yeah, I, I agree there. Like uh, some of my liberal friends were thinking that the, the, the march on Washington was funny and all that. Oh, the white people are getting a taste of the place. It's like, no, no, dude, this is staged. This is fucking staged. Yeah, it's staged. It's oh, staged. fuck. <laughs> so this is a fuck up of monumental proportions. Is there anybody? Is there anybody that you've heard saying the same thing as you, uh, you out there that you know in the States or that you've heard around? Have you no, I, any I've, been struggling, I've been struggling to keep up with the news because it's coming so fast. But the, I'm, I'm, I'm basically, I, yeah, I'm alarmed at the fact that 
that I, people are not seeing it this way. Yeah, yeah. So you, you must balance the fact that maybe I've got totally unhinged on this score and that I'm completely misreading the situation. But I'm telling you how I see it. And the reason why I'm so confident to come out here is because it, it's a convergence of a lot of things. So basically, I saw this day come in um, and for a long, long time, and it ba basically converges on this. So if, if I'm going off um, half cocked, then yeah, you'll soon find out. You'll find out this week if I'm going off half -cocked. No, but I, I, I was saying that because, because I mean, the sort of message that, you, that you're giving there is, 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 is good to, to, to share and to broadcast. I mean, this is why any means, whether you're right or wrong, and uh, you know, I'm, I was just wondering if there was any anybody or any echo, or any platform or anything that has any little I'm, bit. No, I'm stunned. I'm, I'm stunned to the point of a conspiracy. I, I mean, when when I look at this, I, I think, fuck it, I've gone over the edge because I'm I'm looking at it and I think, you no, know, surely this can't be that bigger conspiracy. And what I mean is, I'm going on all these places looking for saying. Surely you get, guys are getting this. So I'm going on subs like um, uh, our anarchism and stuff like that. And they're not getting it. They, they, they like fucking liberals. They're basically, they're basically, they're not anarchists. They're just clueless fucking snowflakes who would wear black. And they're not getting it. On, on, on our anarchism, they, 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 they're saying the same shit as they're saying on any other sub or in any other forum where, where they liberal forum where they're saying, Oh, you see, uh, this wouldn't happen if they, you know, if they weren't white, see, this is why the country needs to change because of white privilege and stuff. You snowflakes need to shut that shit up. Yeah. I mean, like you're so out of touch. Yeah. Yeah. Like I I'm on several, like, you know, like leftist communists and anarchist discords and it's the same shit. Just the funny memes coming in about all oh, the white people marched on Washington. It's like, dude, no. Oh my God. They just don't understand. This is exactly where I'm at. It's basically, it's, it's, it's horrendous. They're basically, they, they have so misinterpreted this, but it, you see, it's, it's the reason why I say like, I, I get so conspiratorial is because is I can't believe that the mainstream media is this fucking dumb. And when all these guys are out there, you know, it's I know the thing, it says never attribute to malice something that can be put down to stupidity. So I'm, I'm saying, yeah, okay, I'll put it down to stupidity, but I really am challenged now with uh, the fang, you know, basically all the social media companies and that. Uh, and they're shutting everybody down. They basically... Um, they they going through doing you know section two uh, thirties on on all these guys picking them out one by one around the world. I mean I don't think Exxon Med is going to survive this. I don't think we're going to survive the week with this uh, with this sub. We'll see see how it goes. I mean there's a lot of a lot of spam and that's the reason for all the spam guys. It's because you know this day is coming. Is some some guy in Eglin Air Force Base is tasked with looking at places like Exomed, and then basically he looks at it and does a threat a threat assessment. And I think we've done quite a good job of showing him that we're just a fucking bunch of idiots. <laughs> He'll look at it, go say, "Well, these guys are crazy," and then say, "But harmless." Yeah. And I think that's basically where, where we're at. But the but I the what makes me really conspiratorial is is if guys like Michael Moore and stuff. Um, all the left-wing guys, it doesn't seem like they're being able to get the message out the rally because uh, basically you're not, you you know, there's such a prohibition against violence and stuff that you can't call out the counter-revolutionaries. It's impossible. Well, well, it's that. And a lot of these people that are in the mainstream that are on the left don't have the radical analysis. They don't understand how, how the state yeah. works, how tyranny works, how power works, how psychopathy works. They don't have that deep intellectual understanding of what's going on, how this shit works. Yeah, they don't they don't understand that these things are all engineered. They can't believe that they think, of, you know, everybody's nice and uh, there's no little man behind the curtain. And so then they can't see the little man at work. And they, they look at this and they say, they look at it as if it's spontaneous. And they say, oh, these guys are a bunch of hooligans. They say, no, they're a bunch of actors. You've got to ask yourself who's directing them. Yeah, it's like the uh, the, 
the man behind the curtain has a poker face in his cards. He's not going to play it until he knows he can win. Yeah, ex exactly. So, yeah, that, it's disturbing from so... Okay, so um, I must read you at least one more page out of this on tyranny. Because I really believe uh, if, if we get through to the 20th um, without... Uh, a tyrant one way or another um, it'll be amazing I, I basically I think where this all ends up um, is uh, in the in the opening intro of my first video in episode one I put exactly how I thought it would end up now the reason you go go and watch it but that intro I put together because of my contacts XCIA there XCIA guys in um, that told me we had these discussions of what happens with Trump and what I was told and now I'm kicking myself because they all fucking left <laughs> leaving guys and they and you know I said um, yeah they, you know I was reassured that don't worry this all gets handled was well, all gets handled politically all the forces are moving this is all going to be handled democratically and it'll be done through normal democratic processes he's going to be impeached uh basically the left's going to win the house and i was assured of all of this this shit so i said i don't believe it's going to happen i don't believe he's going to get impeached i don't you know basically the house is not going to sweep you know as well as i do that the elections get hacked and the and so I said, I don't believe the scenario. I said, what happens when all this shit fails? And then they said, well, the, there's a plan in place for that too. And I pushed and pushed and pushed. And I said, what is the plan? Is it the normal one that like, you know, it's Kennedy plan? And he said, yes. And so I said, basically, okay, give me the details. Is how, how is it done? Is it done it like a uh, De Gaulle, you know? Are we going to do a little, you know, ID and I said, no. It, it's already in plan. How it works is they basically, uh, he says, I can't give you the details, but uh, I said, well, oh, I, I said, well, how does it work? Because if you, if you take out the first one, uh, Pence could be worse. And uh, I was told, yeah, um, Pence is probably worse, but the plan is uh, take them both down at the same time and, and Pelosi uh, takes control. So, so I said, okay, how the fuck do you do that? That is something, a real magnificent trick to pull off. And uh, so, well, uh, basically I said, do you do it like uh, De Gaulle? You know, basically De Gaulle had fucking 74, oh, fuck, I can't remember, but it, almost 100 assassination attempts. It was, Sophie, you would know. How many attempts did De Gaulle have in his life? Oh, you, you mute, you mute him. You, you muted. No, I, I don't know how many, but there was a lot. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot. It was a lot. like 74, you know, it was like yeah, the, the movies are like the day of the jackal. It's very, very hard. It's mm -hmm. very, very hard to take a guy. But a lot of the ones to take out De Gaulle were, uh, were bombs. They used a lot of bombs yeah. out of the road, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's it, it's exceptionally difficult to take one of these guys out. Um, you can do it with a drone or something really easy, but, um, you know, uh, to, to actually do it in a liberal democracy. very uh, So I didn't write. So I said, what's the plan? And um, I said, well, I can't tell you. But I said, okay, did the usual thing where I say, just guess, take it. If you read my book, you know what you do? Say, I'll give you some scenarios. And the, it's the drinking game. And if I get the right one, take a sip of your drink. And uh, basically I said, okay, um, from a distance, uh, full metal jacket and took a drink so that's so then based on that i put that in the first on the strength of that i put it in the first first video because i thought well one or two things happens either my source is all full of shit, in which case you know no harm done i just got a crazy intro <laughs> But otherwise, if he turns out to be right, then the intro, intro, intro to my video sounds like genius. You know, <laughs> like, like how did you, how did you predict that? So I thought it was safe to put it in and go and have a look at it. But that's 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 what I believe uh, Trump's heading for. Um, 
it's just a question how quickly. Uh, I don't believe it. you can put together something that quick. So I wouldn't expect that this week. Um, I, I don't believe that the plans for that. I mean, I'm not in touch with this, but I, don't, I get no hint that the plans for that kind of thing are, are very advanced. So what, what I anticipate is that uh, Trump's liable to, if it all pans out the way I think it would be, it's Trump's liable to declare martial law and then a, a slow um, insurrection starts, so basically a slow burn insurrection. So ba basically they have to clear the streets and send a strong message that you don't do Occupy Wall Street, those days are over. And the police want revenge, right? You see, everybody's so focused on Floyd and stuff like that, they forget that those fuckers want revenge. They hate the public. They hate the public. And they've got scores to settle. And, and the, the guys in the police have been so restrained all over Seattle, all these guys, they've been spat in the face. They had to take it and take it and take it. And they are at their limit. And I'm telling you, they want to let loose on a crowd. They are dying to let a t crowd taste lead. They've had to be restrained for so long. And the liberal left has not noticed it because they're so in with their own shit and priest brutality. They haven't thought of what it's like to be a policeman. The police want revenge. And basically, they're going to be allowed to do it as soon as there's martial law. So basically, you're in deep, deep shit. Okay, so here's this chapter, you know, 18. There's advice from this book on tyranny. 18. Be calm when the unthinkable arrives. And this is where I think we're at. And if I'm completely full of shit, well, it's, it's out here on video. And <laughs> you, you can always go back and say, you... Do you remember at uh, Sunday the 10th when you spouted all that shit that never happened? <laughs> it's like, shut the fuck up. And I'd go, mea culpa, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I am full of shit. I'll never open my mouth again. But I, I'm telling you the way I read it because I've got nothing to gain. It's just like uh, I, I just need to put this out to you because it's just so damn serious. Anyway, so it says, be calm uh, when the unthinkable arrives. Uh, modern, modern tyranny is terror management. When the terrorist attack comes, remember that uh, an author, uh, oh, I remember that, oh, sorry, I'll read this again. Modern tyranny is terror management. Uh, when the terrorist attack comes, now this this is this is what happened on Wednesday. This is what they were anticipating in, in 2017, the guys who, who, who gave me this book. Uh, remember that authoritarians exploit such events in order to consolidate power. And I think that's what we're going to see next, right? We're going to see a de deliberate <clears throat> uh, mayhem on the streets and chaos uh, that gives Trump the excuse to consolidate power in the interests of restoring law and order. <coughs> the sudden disaster that requires the end of checks and balances, which is here, the dissolution of opposition parties, the suspension of freedom of expression, the right to a fair trial, and so on, is the oldest trick in the Hitlerian book. Do not fall for it. Well, I'm afraid everybody's going to fall for it. There's no ways that where we're at psychologically, the all the bullshit, the self-delusion and stuff means that everybody is going to go with this. The, the left is liable to go out on the streets <clears throat> and stuff. They, they, you know, they just haven't done their history. And now comes basically the exam. And I'm telling you that this crowd is going to flunk the exam. So the, the Reichstag fire was the moment when Hitler's government which came to power mainly through democratic means, became the menacingly permanent Nazi regime. So I think Wednesday has a, if it's not the Reichstag fire, the Reichstag fire is coming this week. It is the archetype of terror management. Okay, and that's where I think we're at. So, yeah, what I would recommend if you <clears throat> left wing and wondering what the hell to do, or if you like, Occupy or an anarchist or something like that is um, now I've got to be really, really careful. 
Um, okay. I w There's not a lot. Think it through. There's not a lot of upside uh, to going down to Washington, right? We're outgunned. We're outprepared. There's this. It, it would play to Trump, right? Basically, the more uh, the more their spectaculars on the streets in Washington, the more <clears throat> it plays into his hands and gives him the right to assume uh, law and order. Uh, I don't think anybody can rely. I mean, given the fact that it looks like security is compromised, I don't think anybody can rely on, um, you know, the cavalry coming in. I, I don't think I, I I was misled. The the guys that I talked to are not as powerful as I thought. Uh, we're not seeing a response from the FBI. We saw the, the head of security um, was was fired, head of security for the Capitol. Uh, that, that's just a token thing because it, basically they have to do that because he was clearly in on it. But according to Michael Moore, they're basically, uh, f you know, one-fifth of the staff on a crucial day when security was probably at the most uh, the capital has had to face, they sent four-fifths of the security staff home. So that means the government is is thoroughly, thoroughly compromised. Um, so there's there's no cavalry. Um, so So what to do about it? Well, but, but, but yeah. why did they send them home? What was what was the they they sent them they sent four fifths okay. of the staff yeah. on Wednesday home. Yeah, have, have a look at Michael Moore's video. Oh yeah, it's no, I, I I just yeah, Michael Moore gives me a headache, so I don't go to the end usually of his things. I don't know why, but I didn't yeah. listen to all that. But yeah, yeah. According, according to him, I, mean, also, I, mean, you know, I imagine he's pretty well informed by the grapevine. Is that he <laughs> says that they. They they were understaffed by <clears throat> four fifths. It, it was a put up job. It's ba basically it's un it's if all of these things are true, it's it's a complete put up job. It was a, a coup from the inside, and the the left wing. You see, this is why I get conspiratorial because if they're shutting down opposition, and they st st shutting down the you know calls for the left to rally. It means that it's possible that the mainstream media are in on it. Basically, it means not particularly the media outlets, but the corporate media. So basically, it means that basically the you know the multinational social media companies are in on it, on the wrong side. It's possible because so a double, double bluff. What? A double bluff um, uh, in re in relation to the mainstream media. Yeah, because you, you see, no, what, yeah, that, that's kind of what I mean. You see, I, I have no basis of fact to, to, to say that, except you can imagine a, a scenario where they, um, they start banning people, shutting them down for hate speech and stuff like that. But it's, it's a very subtle thing because what they're doing is shutting down opposition to martial law, in effect. Mm. They're stopping basically the, the, Paul Revere riding out and the, the troops coming in. So they're stopping counter-revolutionaries on the basis that, no, we're just stopping violence and hate speech and we're trying to, we're doing the right thing. So in doing the right thing, they can, you know, they can stop the public coming out against a compromised government. And I think that that is a very possible scenario that I'm not, uh, the, the media, have, the media I have grave doubts about, but, but it, uh, I have, no trust at all in the big multinational social media companies. If, if there is a big coup, I, if somebody says they're in it, it's like, well, fuck, there's no surprise. So, so uh, I can well see a scenario where they, they start doing the first sweeps of the Kristallnacht, the light, night of the long knives, and when they start at the top of the list and they start suppressing everybody, the very first things might look like good guys trying to do the right thing and just shutting down all the people that might oppose this. So that basically Michael Moore and stuff might go, you know, if, if Michael Moore gets shut down, if, the, if you see some trumped up, fucked up excuse and, uh, that Michael Moore has taken offline, that's a very, very bad sign. Basically, any, anybody that's getting it, if they find some obscure fucking reason and they trump up something like they take you down like Roger Hallam. Remember how Roger Hallam was taken down in Germany by a De Spiegel? They just mm -hmm. went and Roger Hallam is a, is, is a bit too much of a knife. He, he's not he's not savvy enough. I mean, he's a fucking organic 
organic farmer. He's well out of his depth. And so Spiegel comes in. He doesn't know how this is how the game is played. And basically, he talks to a Spiegel reporter, and the Spiegel reporter has one aim. Bring Roger Hallam down in Germany. Easy as pie. Basically, say, what do you think about the fucking Holocaust? Roger Hallam yeah. falls right into their trap, and they bam. Roger Hallam's out, out of Germany, out of XR. Just in one sentence. So if you see that happening, you see Michael Moore taken down that way. Basically, clear, obvious smear, hits, you know, uh, cancel culture comes in and takes off their heads, and you think, hey, well, but hang on, Michael Moore's a good guy. You know, it's like, no, now he's a bad guy. Basically, you, if you see that kind of thing, then you know that we're in big trouble from the deep conspiracy theory. But we're not there yet. They're taking down QAnon guys and stuff like that. Um, so it, it's uh, it's hopeless. The, I mean, that's closing the the door before the um, you know after the the horse is bolted. But um, yeah, um, that's yeah, that's. We we'll have to see see how how that unfolds. But if I had to say, what if you are like a concerned person that wants to do something now? Uh, I would say we've we kind of lost the battle for for the capital already. It's basically the it's too star crossed at this stage um, to actually uh, really go down to Washington. Um, but uh, I think. I imagine the kind of other scenario, which is, uh, you know, um, you know, the other places, you know, other places, not, not, not Washington, right? Yeah. The other places you can go, you know, you remember Micah White? Does anybody remember Micah White? No. No. Micah White started Occupy Wall Street. Occupy oh, yeah. Wall Street. Right? Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. And he was very close to the mother love. So imagine, imagine that this weird fucking scenario that we had super intelligent people on the left and not fucking dipshits. <laughs> and we had leadership on the left and all sorts of shit that basically has been flushed down the toilet of liberalism and fucking ID poll and just basically liberalism and egocentrism. Imagine this weird thing, this thing elsewhere. Let's imagine there's this planet elsewhere. And on this planet elsewhere, I'll tell you what happened. There's a story that came from the planet elsewhere. And what happened on elsewhere, as I, if I remember this, is... A weird situation like this unfolded. Now, all the white people went down to the capital to do a bit of theater. Now, all the other people, the black people, let's call them, they weren't dumb enough to go down there and create the scene that allows for martial law. They avoided the... Uh, um for loss. Right? They didn't go to the capital. They went to the nest of the beast. They went on this planet elsewhere to the commercial center. And they avoided these other pricks. You see, if if you're seen to have be black against white, they win. Trump wins. He's it's basically Charlottesville. It basically says. It's a race war. I need to help you guys out. You need me. I'm restoring law and order. Then basically it appeals to the middle class. What happened on elsewhere was they saw this kind of thing happening. So they said, okay, we'll do a bit of a party. We'll stay out of the, out of the, the path of the white guys, and we will go and take a rear guard action at the nest of the beasts. Now this is a little bit different because you've got, now it works to say on the media, look at the difference. If you're black, you get shot. Look what happens to the white guy. That's a different thing. See, if the black guys are all on the, you know, at the head of the, you know, basically at the center of the beast, really taking bullets 
And the other guys are basically being shown into the inner offices inside the, the Capitol building. Everyone gets it. It's a fucking set up job. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. <clears throat> yep. So that's what I would recommend is we go back and do a little rerun of Michael White's plan. But now, cut the crap. Cut the bullshit. No more than Mr. Nice Guy. Okay? That's not an option anymore. But now, think it through. Imagine all these, uh, let's call it our side on the planet elsewhere. Imagine that they are doing tit for tat right in the belly of the beast where the bull, you know, that, you know, right in the belly of the beast, we had a bull. It was a big brass bull, big horns right there, stood right in the middle of the street. That place. If they did tit for tat in that place, that's different because whatever they do in the other place, it squeezes the fucking our masters who actually live around that bull. It squeezes their nuts and they are going to be on the phone saying, cut this crap. The markets are collapsing. Does that yes. make any sense? We have this perfect situation for what for your scenario is the COVID situation. And people are completely petrified of assembly. Yeah. And uh, that is a big, I mean, on the game of chess, that is the Well, <laughs> well my view yeah, of it. That's the biggest problem. We, we, we caught yeah. kind of main, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. With, with the COVID thing, my view of it is if people are willing to wear masks and go shopping, they can wear masks and go, you know, on planet yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah th th think of that. So if that basically you in, in London, you're not allowed to wear a mask because, you know, you know, the surveillance cameras in normal times. Now you have to wear a mask. Well, fuck, it really is a kind of a gift. If you go and get an anonymous mask now, and basically, you say you're obeying the law. It yep. really is a gift. If if you get if you get over if you so so let's be sensible here. The pandemic is real. It's it's fucking brutal. So you got to take precautions, right? You've got to be seen to be taking precautions. Make make it such that basically we say everyone on our side does, you know, security. And security, part of security culture is security against the virus. Yeah, and another thing, a, a, a cut bullshit rallying call is, of course, with the pandemic, the nearly 400,000 have died is because, you know, the government wanted to keep business going well. Simply, they caused all those people to die because they wanted their money. So on mm -hmm. elsewhere, let's go to the bull and squeeze their balls for revenge. It's yeah. that simple. Money yeah. over people. That's this whole fucking system. Money over people. So yeah. let's put people over money. Yeah. Basically, as they put pressure on the capital, the bull gets its ball squeezed. Yeah. But what is your read on how the St. Elsewhere non-white denizens um, are interpreting everything that's going on? Like you said before, a lot of people are just saying, oh, look at that. You know, white people stormed the Capitol. Nothing was done. But if it were us, you know, it's only down to that level. I don't think there's any, um, I mean, I'm politically naive. I don't know how the non-white saint elsewhere denizens are looking at this. Is there even a consciousness about that the, that the root of all evil is that golden bull? There's not, but it's, well, there, there isn't, there isn't. Um, there's a general awareness that basically, well, yeah, it's probably even better than the white folk. But uh, the, the strategy of going down and squeezing the bull is a big ask because, you see, what the black folk know is the, 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 
the police are shoot to kill. <laughs> you know, white folk don't know that yet. They're about to find that out. Yeah. Now, I think the black folk have an advantage because they're not, they, they don't have any shit in their brains. They don't have any leadership. But if, if the word goes out, dude, it's we, you know, every time shit goes down on in Washington, we squeeze the bull, bull's balls, they'll get it fucking quick. So there, there's also basically, there's a lot of, you know, black people around the bull in the local environs that are basically a tube train away or walking away uh, from, uh, you know, from that local environment where the bull lives. So they, the word could quickly get out and spread that that's the game plan. And, and then basically I think black people have, a, have an advantage because they know the game and they can measure it. You see, it, it becomes a game of, me, of, of, of seeing how far you can go before you take a bullet. They can't, they can't, they need provocation to, to, um, to open fire. And black guys are far more attuned to know when a cop is about to open fire than white people. White, white people are going to be fucking amazed. It's going to be, um, you know, uh, Princeton all over again. What was it? No, um, Berkeley. Basically, they're going to be shocked. Oh, you're on our side. You can't shoot us. <laughs> that's what that's going to happen to white people. Black people are going to, dude. <laughs> they, not only do they can they shoot you, they will. Yeah, it, it's because uh, black people are ahead of the game in terms of psychology. Yeah, it's because I think like most like upper working class people are you know completely naive to who the police really serve. It's like it's not just white people. It's rich white people that the police protect. The rich fuckers, not them, because it's yeah, like. Because what? Because I the thing is with the liberals seeing the uh, you know the the uh, performance in Washington, it's like uh, oh crap, where was I, where was I going with that? Um, ah, I lost well, my train. They, they, think it, they think it's all ID poll and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's where I was going. Yeah, they think it's all ID poll. Yeah, and it's not. No, the 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 existence of class in this country has pretty much been completely erased. You know class consciousness yeah yeah there's there's the racism bit and the id poll but there's no division between rich and poor because like you said in your um escape by getting rich video americans generally believe oh i'm going to be that guy someday yeah that that viewpoint is going to be challenged <laughs> yeah yeah for sure well, well guys I, I i've laid out exactly what i think and now you know i'm Put my cards and on the now, table. Now, now, you know, you'll get to see quickly whether I'm full of shit. And now what? we're going to have nightmares for about uh, eleven days, ten days. <laughs> so what? What I would suggest is the best, the best cure. The best cure for nightmares is to get out and do something. Yeah, I know. I know. It's, yeah. it's basically channel, channel all that energy into revenge. So mm. there's, there's so basically. There's so much opportunity. Uh, we've got all the skills. We know how to navigate social media without getting instantly shut down. We know yeah. how to dog whistle, getting people roused up. You, you know, you got all the skills. You basically get your frustrations by going around the house yeah, yeah. and seeing what you know, seeing if you can light a spark. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it would be a bit too tiring to cross the Atlantic for me at this stage. <laughs> no, I know, no, everything's virtual. No, no, I know. That's necessary. Everything's virtual. You see, stay, stay, you see, okay, for everybody else, if anybody sees this video, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. This is the whole thing that I'm trying to be telling XR and stuff is get off the streets. This is going to be fought in cyberspace. Basically, the state actors have been fighting in cyberspace for two decades. This, this war is first online. It'll eventually get to the streets. Well, I mean, it's going to get to the streets this week because basically the guys are going to learn, get a little, a little learning experience. But after their little learning experience, there's going to be a freeze. And what I, this is the scenario that I'm telling you from South Africa. 
is basically they're going to put a real chill on everything. What happens during that chill period is everybody gets over their shock and mortification. They suddenly get over the fact that there really are conspiracy theories and they are fucking in the middle of Auschwitz. And then they start basically planning a few good salts who are egoless and fucking have a conscience. They start planning the resistance and then it starts warming up slowly. But when that comes back, the streets will be empty. They have to start online. So we already know this game and we can start straight away online. We're not going to change the world. We're not going to intervene in this. Mm. This is kind of, you know, th there's too much momentum behind this already. But we can hone our skills <laughs> for, for what comes next. Yeah, practice. Yeah, this is, this is a practice practice run for us. So, you, so you, 